let's let's look at this uh, again. Probability is a fraction, percent, or decimal, with uh, working some problems using your calculator. So we're looking at converting three quarters to a decimal. So using your calculator, all right, we're going to hit the BC function, and then we're going to put in the fraction three quarters. So three quarters. And we are going to next we're going to be looking that looking at that as a decimal. And when we do, it's going to be 0 0.75. I don't know if you can see that, but 0 0.75 would be the percentage for that fraction three quarters. Now we also want to convert 1.25 uh, to a fraction. Now, you know, three quarters. Uh, 0.75 uh, and 1.25 to a fraction. So we're going to type in, I'm going to clear this, all right, I'm going to type in 0.1.125. Okay, we're going to look at the uh, function and we're going to enter that and we get 0.125 that comes out of the fraction of one, can you see that? The fraction is one eighth. So it is one eighth would be our answer. Okay, and number three, we're looking at uh, converting a percentage to a decimal when the type of percent button, but this button does not convert decimals into percent. So let's see how that uh, translates to what we're looking at here. We'll just do it together. All right, we're going to type in the number 78. There it is. All right, we're going to type the percentage button. There it is, percentage button. And we're going to enter, and we're going to see what our answer is. Well, our answer is 78 hundredths. So 78% is 78 hundredths. But we, we know that from discussing the percentage and how you write that numerically and with decibel. Decimals. All right, and finally on number four, we're going to look at converting 53, uh, 53 hundredths into a percent. Now that's pretty pretty good, pretty simple, I think. But anyway, it may not be simple to to all of us. So let's look at how we do it on a calculator. Okay, so we're going to put in the number 53. Well, I'm sorry, we're going to back up and let's put in 0.53. Point Three. Goodness gracious. Point five three. Okay. Then we're going to look at find the percent button. And there it is, percentage. Okay. And then we're going to enter that. And look at that. Point zero zero five three. We'd move it two places to make it fifty three hundredths of a percent or fifty three hundredths percent. Okay. So that's our answer for that one. I'm going to clear that. And the next thing we're going to be looking at will be the complement. Complement. You know, when you say complement, you know, I, I'm an English teacher by trade. Uh, I used to think complement is something that refers back to something that's being a descriptor. And in the, you know, down the day, everyday life when somebody gives you a compliment it's spelled a little differently with an I rather than an E but it's a good thing. But let's see about compliment mathematically. All outcomes that are out of the total possible outcomes that are not favorable. Alright? That are not favorable. Alright, let's look at uh, our mathematical symbols and outcomes for the complement. Okay? When we're trying to determine the probability of rolling an even number on a number cube, we can see that there are six sides labeled which represent then their possible outcomes. Alright, there'd be one, two, three, 
four, five, and six. Those are all possible outcomes on a number cube. We can see that there are three numbers that are even. Those are our favorable outcomes. That would be two, four, and six. And there are three numbers left that represent our complement. That's total possible outcomes that are not favorable. So those outcomes would be the odd numbers, which would be one, three, and five. All right, so the probability of our favorable outcome added to the probability of our complement will always equal one. Let's look at that mathematically. So, in the numerator, excuse me, we have 3 over 6. We reduce that, that equals 1 half. And that would be the even number cubes. All right, our complement, or we would have P as our odd. All right, we still have three possibilities over of not coming up as even, and we have six potentials, so it's three over six. That equals, again, one half. Now, so the P event plus probability of the complement equal one half plus one half and if you add those together two halves make a whole a one a one so that's all outcomes out of the possible outcomes that are not favorable as a complement. That's our new component, the complement. So we're coming up with a uh, probability of making these this number um, cube come up the probability of what we want, and it's going to equal one as we can see. Now, our next term to look at mathematically in the lesson will be the experimental probability. Probability discovered after many trials and experiment has been completed. Okay, experimental probability can be used to determine the likelihood of future events. Aha, we're getting into looking into a crystal ball, I believe. So mathematically, we're looking at P event, or the probability event, equals the number of times that the event occurs in the numerator divided by the number of times that an experiment is done as your denominator. Let's look at an example of experimental probability, an example of experimental probability. Let's consider a fantasy football league and a fantasy football team. In fantasy football, players from a variety of real National Football League teams are placed on fantasy teams. You yourself may be involved in playing fantasy football. These players earn points from their fantasy teams based on achievements like the yards they gain, like the touchdowns they score, the field goals they kick, so on and so forth. In our example, we're going to look at Pittsburgh Steeler running back Rashad Mendehall and results from the 2010 and 2011 season for our data. Let's uh, say in order to win our fantasy football championship playoff, we need Rashad Mendehall, Mendenhall to earn 10 points in his next three games which are games 14, 15, and 16 of the NFL season. 
In order to begin to make a prediction about these weeks, we need to first determine the experimental probability of Mendenhall scoring over 10 fantasy points in the games that he has already played. Conveniently, the table above lists his fantasy results in the 13 games that have already been played this season. Let's look at this. Rashad has scored over 10 points in 7 out of the 13, under 10 points in 5 out of the 13, and he didn't play in 1. So that's the frequency and the results that we're looking for. So what's the experimental probability that Rashad Mendenhall will score 10 fantasy points in his remaining three games? In order to set up our probability, we need to consider how many total games have been played, which is 14, that's 7 plus 6 plus 1, and place this number on the bottom of our ratio. On the top, we'll place the number that represents success, which in this case is the seven games in which Mendenhall scored over 10 fantasy points. Now we write our problem in the following manner. Got ahead of myself, excuse me. All right. All right, the probability of 10 points for Rashad in the next three games, I'm going to abbreviate points, would equal in the numerator 7 over 13, which is the total number of games in the denominator. This can also be written, of course, as a decimal or a percent. All right, as we, if we're using our calculator to convert to a decimal, it's going to come out 0.54. If we multiply 0.54 by 100 to get a percent, then it will end up moving at two spots, which would end up 54 with our percent sign. So that's 54%. How many of these games will be in which he scores more than 10 fantasy points? So it looks like that we have a 54% chance, a little over half, that indeed Richard Mendenhall, Mendenhall would be a good pick for your fantasy football league. Now let's look at it again a little bit closer using the same example of our Pittsburgh Steeler running back. So if Mendenhall plays three more games in the fantasy season, let's predict how many of these games will be games in which he scores more than 10 fantasy points. All right, we're using experimental probability. We're determining we can make a reasonable prediction of future results. It's uh, in our problem with Mendenhall's previous games, we found that the experimental probability of him scoring more than 10 fantasy points is 7 over 13, or 54%. In order to reasonably predict how many of the next three games will be games in which Mendenhall scores more than 10 fantasy points, we simply multiply the experimental probability by the number of future games. So, this would look like three, the number of future games, seven thirteenths, which was what his ten point probabilities were to this point, and that equals, when we multiply it out, or we have to equals one eight over eight thirteenths, and this all comes out, it equals out to one point six so based solely on our calculations of his performance in previous games, 
we can reasonably assume that Richard Mendenhall from the Pittsburgh Steelers will score more than 10 fantasy points in about two of the next three games. Incidentally, that's exactly what happened in week 14 where he scored six points, week 15, 16 points, and week 13, 16 with 13 points. So you know what? The probability was correct. Our experiment was positive regarding Richard Mendenhall in the 2010 Professional Football Fantasy League season. All right, let's next look at uh, some example problems with some experimental probability with other things. So we're looking at uh, problems of uh, birds in the field uh, and the number of birds in each color. Okay, we're looking for P as being blue, yellow, blue, or green, probability of yellow, red, blue, or black, and the probability of green for these birds in the field. We're going to consider the colors of the birds in the field. Of course, we have them listed, and many of the birds of each color are present. For each problem, we're going to determine the probability of capturing specific colors of birds, assuming each bird is an easy catch as the next, and that we can catch any bird that we want. That's an assumption we have to make. Question one asks about the probability of catching a blue bird, two, a yellow, three, a blue or red. Question four asks about the probability of catching a yellow bird, a red bird, a blue bird, or a black bird. And question five asks about the possibility of catching a green bird. Let's let you pause just a second as you work on these, and then we will check it together. You come up with the answer using the information that you have been given to this point. 